my uh, practice. I'm going to share my screen now. Hope you can see the screen now. Uh, yes, uh, we can see. Yes, thank you. So just one slide. Uh, it contains all the things that uh, I'm going to talk um, for, I think, maybe 30 minutes. Maybe uh, shorter than that. Um, so this is based on my uh, practice uh, for the class session uh, related to engineering subject, um, KIB 13011, uh, uh, digital system and uh, microcomputer. So it is on uh, technology side. Lah. So it involves lots of uh, scribble, the equation, and then uh, plot the table and so on. Uh, I divide this uh, uh, the content uh, into three categories. Uh, the upper categories involve uh, what I'm doing before, and then at the middle, uh, what I'm doing uh, during the uh, the class, and then lastly after. So uh, the first one, uh, get ready with necessary tools. Oh, what is this? So I. I normally will be using two screens. One is for me to share the screen with the student and the other one is for me to get feedback. This I think important um, to see how our recipient, how the student is, is doing on their side. Lah. So I normally ask them to turn on their camera. Not all, those who are willing to turn on, they, they can turn on and also uh, uh, write something if they want to ask question and also when I ask something they will uh, feedback on the chat as well. So this is uh, I think useful um, to have two screen if you if you are using your laptop you can always plug in another uh, your, your existing uh, screen on the on your laptop then you have two screens um, and of course we need to have a good camera and good mic um, because the student side, if the sound is not that good, they have to listen to the very bad sound for uh, if your class is three hours, then for the three hours. And then they have other class as well. So if the sound is uh, good quality, then it somehow um, uh, reduce the uh, tension on the student side. And also can camera. Um, and I also uh, use a uh, writing pad. Uh, I think what is the pen? Lupa dah nama brand. Wacom. Uh, Wacom is quite a branded. Uh, the brand because uh, it has a good quality lah. I mean, when you write, uh, it has a very fine pixel. So you can, in, in order to write the equation, it will be easier lah. Um, if I go back to the screen, to screen, um, if I can show you, so I can open and then show to our student, to, to the student who are actually uh, participating actively in the uh, session, in the meeting chat, and also who are currently open the, the video. So this will motivate more students to turn on the camera. Uh, why important to turn on the camera? It gives you uh, feedback. I mean, you can see how your student is doing, whether they are uh, too tired already or still excited. So if the student mood changes, then you can uh, do certain things to, to, so that you can change the environment. You can change the mood of student. So no point keep talking and then all the students are no longer listening to you. So. Hope each of you still listen, listen to my talk. <coughs> masih, masih dengar ke? Ya, ya. Ya, ya, dengar. Alright. Um, um, and then I utilize a collaborative tool. Uh, of course, you need to familiar yourself with the tools. Um, like uh, Dr. Rosie just now shared. Uh, uh, mentioned about uh, Miro, Miro. Uh, we, you can use a uh, Google Sheet as well to collaborate with students. Open it and then let uh, everyone with the link to access. 
and it did, this is quite useful uh, because you can see um, you can post question there and then create a column with a student uh, metric uh, number and then ask them to give feedback there immediately you can see uh, their feedback and then uh, student themselves also be able to see feedback from uh, their friend as well um, another way if it involves uh, uh, asking student to solve certain uh, equation I, I will normally use whiteboard uh, that comes along with the <coughs> with the ms team if you notice uh, this one uh, this is our ms team uh, when you click share and then down here there will be a uh, pop-up uh, windows it is located right over here right over here so you have a uh, screen one screen two if you have more than one two one screen then there will be screen one screen two and then uh, other apps that you can share i normally share screen one and then whatever i show there the student will be able to see but be careful don't let your question exam question open at that time uh, make sure you check um the, the 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 danger of sharing screen is that uh, if you somehow work on your exam question and then you attend the class online um, there will be a possibility of student able to see the the exam question so be careful um writing pad collaborative tool google sheet uh, whiteboard any questions so far on this uh, part. If not, then I will continue. Tak ada. No question. Tak ada, tak ada. Alright. Uh, saya bukan ajar, saya just share. <laughs> um, I'm just sharing. Uh, whatever you think suitable, then uh, please use it. If not, uh, if you think it's not suitable, then uh, you can opt to other technique. Uh, and second, this is beginning beginning of uh, semester beginning of semester for this class I normally call somebody senior who are in industry or maybe um, very experienced professor to come over to the class and motivate student um, tell the student where this subject, why this subject is important, where it is uh, going to be used. So this will somehow, uh, yeah, of course, we, we motivate the student um, and then they know uh, where this subject is going to be used. All right. So this is based on my uh, previous, previous experience. When I was a student, I forced to take up a subject that I don't know how this subject is related to my field because as a student you don't see the bigger picture at the time so it is good to uh, call somebody maybe from industry uh, to give uh, uh, at the beginning as introduction to the course to the subject uh, so that the student will get the uh, bigger picture all right of course you can um, motivate the student but if you have somebody else who have experience it will be better um, uh, this one reminder uh, prior to the class session i normally will uh, remind them uh, a day before a night before um, that, that uh, we're going to have class this is the link to the class and then if there's any pending task that they're supposed to do I will remind them uh, yeah, regularly and also the time when the class is going to start. Um, of course, they know um, this is just a reminder because students are always with their uh, mobile phone and then if there's message come in, they will open and then uh, they know that uh, this, they actually enroll to the class and then they have to do certain things. And I also uh, post uh, related videos related to the uh, course uh, that going to be carried out uh, on the um, next day for example so that they will uh, view it and then when they come to the class they somehow have an idea already so it will be easier to uh, discuss the content of the subject and uh, perhaps they will have more questions at that time so 
it will be uh, more interactive session. Um, always link and relate. All right. Every um, every week um, we have fourteen weeks, right? Um, for second uh, lecture, third lecture, and uh, subsequent lectures. Uh, in at the beginning of the lecture session, I normally try to link uh, the uh, previous uh, things that they have they have learned and to the thing that uh, I'm going to teach them on that day. So this linking is uh, somehow I think uh, it will allow them to uh, memorize longer. It, it help them to memorize the the subject contents because it links to whatever they they have. This is not only linked to the uh, uh, subject in previous semester, but also subject or things that they learn in their school. We uh, try to link it. Like for example, in this subject, I have a base two. Um, I try to link with their um, subject in their school. <coughs> um, and also relate to the uh, actual environment, actual uh, things that they're going to practice in future. Okay, uh, and then uh, lastly, um, I always uh, ask for constructive feedback. Um, it is good to ask um, every at the end of the class or maybe uh, after uh, two or three weeks so that uh, you know uh, how you perform, what are the things that uh, student anticipate to know, what are the things that uh, student uh, prefer, the preference on the student side. So with that, we can always adjust and fine tune our, our uh, teaching and learning activities and also the way the de delivery of the content. And they somehow, um, sometimes they will give a very brilliant idea that you can implement in the class. Um, I think that so, uh, it's quite uh, short. So if there's any question, I will take up the question uh, and then we can do a discussion. If not, I pass to the next <laughs> uh, presenter. Ada soalan tak? Dr. Tan, how are you? Yeah, fine. How are you? Dr. Yazid. Yeah. Good. Good. Anything uh, you, you would like to ask? It's quite, quite short. Um, no, at the moment. <laughs> No, I don't. <laughs> All right. I think okay, uh, yes, it, if I may ask. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, uh, for the constructive feedback that uh, you actually ask uh, from the students, um, what are the ways that you use to get their feedback? Uh, we can use Spectrum. Um, or you can use the like a Google Sheet just now. Um, sometimes students uh quite shy to give the feedback. If you use Google Sheet. They will tell all nice thing about you because they will because uh, um, it depends on the setting as well. If you set the Google Sheet only uh, those with emails uh, registered email can uh, edit, then they will they somehow a little bit shy to 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 voice out their their their, their concern. Um, yes. If you open a Google Sheet and that link is open to anyone, that means they can log in as uh, anonymously, then um, they will say something. Uh, but still, uh, because it is appear to anyone, uh, everyone, they, they somehow uh, don't like to say, uh, I don't know. It, 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 it is not everything they, they, that, that they want to say, they will say it. They will keep it somehow. But if you use, uh, I think, uh, the feedback um, from the spectrum, uh, there is a feedback uh, module uh, that they, they, they somehow, I think, they, they can give uh, quite a good uh, feedback. If 
they think the thing that you are doing is bad, they really tell it. You need to tell them. Give, of course, they, they tell something uh, not good, but we need to tell them, give the constructive one, constructive feedback. They need to uh, fine tune the, the, the words that they're trying to say. Uh, uh, I don't know, how, how, how about you? Are you using, uh, but uh, when I do physical class, I normally ask them to write on a piece of paper, don't have to write their name, and then fold the paper and then pass to, to me after the class. So that's during the physical class. And then I receive many things. Lah. It is very useful. They, they, uh, and they, they feel, uh, how to say, we are listening to them. They appreciate it if we are requesting their, their feedback. Dr. Rosie, uh, macam mana Dr. Rosie dapat feedback daripada student? Uh, biasa saya uh, uh, apa? Uh, I put up uh, Jamboard. Oh Jamboard. Uh, yeah Jamboard and then uh, I, I get reflection uh, from the content of the, my lecture but I didn't ask them about uh, my teaching method and so on. So probably I would use your your idea uh, in <coughs> my next lesson okay. just ask them because they are very polite say they don't say anything i said you be frank with me i said be frank with me uh if you are not happy with my method you just let me know you can pm me i said you know uh I, i'm not gonna uh, i'm very open i i told them i'm very open i won't discriminate you um yeah, because I, I learn uh, to improve my teaching. I say, if you don't tell me, I won't, yes, yes. I won't know. And then um, what I learned from Emerald, okay, what I learned from Emerald, <laughs> uh, some of the lecturers give lots of, lots of uh, work uh, for the, for yes, us, you, you know, participants to do. Uh, I am very unhappy with that. And then I said, wow, uh, is this what I, I did to my students? So uh, this time, yeah, yeah, I learned, I learned. So I, I said, okay, uh, this time I won't, I won't pressure my students. What I do is that uh, very light but very impactful. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I I did this time around. So okay. I don't know because um, we heard uh, from them. Uh, ada ada perkata yang dekat Facebook tu apa? Um, I love. Uh, Facebook, student uh, relief dia orang punya perasaan. Compassion. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Compassion. My my colleague Compassion. said, uh, okay, students are not happy. Students said they blah, 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 blah. Okay, uh, I said, okay, okay. So even though it's general, but you know, you you feel it, you know. You, you kind of, okay, sympathize them. Because mm. some of the students, when they are at home, they have to do house chores and so on. So yeah, yeah. parents are not um, yes, it's, it's kind it's, to them yeah, yeah. <laughs> because they are adults. So that that's why. So yeah, I feel uh, you know I feel what what happened in my Emerald class. There are lecturers who are so kind, only give maybe two tasks, and then there are lecturers <laughs> who are not who are very unkind, us to, to so many things. You know, and within uh, one or two weeks, and then we have other tasks also. Mm. So I say, oh, this is what my students are feeling. So that's why, um, apa bertobat lah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so I think uh, I'll pass to the uh, next uh, uh, lecturer, Dr. Tan. So over to you. I'm going to unshare my screen. Okay. Thanks, Dr. Yazid. Let me share the screen. Right. So I hope you all can see the screen, right? Yeah, I can. Yeah, uh, very good morning to all. Uh, into my class. So today I'm going to share with you uh, how I conduct my class online. So my name is uh, Bun Jin. I'm from uh, Center for Research in Biotechnology for Agriculture. In short, uh, we just call SEBA. 
So I teach some of the courses uh, with uh, together with the faculty. So on uh, biology uh, disciplines. So next. So here, uh, here is the outline where I should talk you through uh, some of the concepts uh, like uh, learning environment, student online learning experience survey, flipped classrooms, and then how I did for my uh, class uh, last year and also for this year. So uh, we know that the uh, COVID-19 pandemic has really changed the education forever. So um, if you look at this chart, you can see last year until March, actually uh, worldwide, a lot of uh, number of learners <clears throat> impacted by this uh, COVID-19. So they have to close the school, close the university, and then this data was last year. So I think uh, it will be more um, um, uh, end of last year and probably this year as well. So everything uh, we have to go online, especially for the teaching and learning. So we know the learning environment has changed from face to face where students can interact with their lecturers and their classmates, talk to each other. OK, so uh, it's more engaging uh, compared to right now. So because of the COVID, so um, uh, restrictions or the lockdown for most of the country. So now everything changed to online the teaching and learning uh, online. <coughs> so where we have to use the technologies uh, to deliver the lectures um, and our students have to do and learn their uh, the, the subjects online and then do the uh, all those assessments are uh, probably online as well. So um, just to share uh, in uh, 2019, actually, I attended a workshop organized by edX. So this topic is on uh, technology embedded teaching and learning. So this was be uh, before COVID. So they are started to like talking about uh, how to uh, integrate the technology into your classroom. So our speaker was uh, Dr. Azida from uh, USM. So she shared with us like how to uh, use some of the technology to deliver and uh, interact with our students uh, online. So she also shared this uh, slides with us like, do you have a class like this? So everyone's uh, happy, everyone's uh, like uh, very engaging and like this type of uh, teaching and learning. So well, um, since it seems like that one is uh, at the end of the class, maybe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe, yes. So well, um, since COVID-19 uh, happened last year and Malaysia has imposed a movement uh, control order and then we everything have to conduct our, um, you know, the teachings, our class uh, online. So then I was thinking, well, um, this may be a good opportunity for us to try, like, let's say, let's try um, online teaching. So I also set up an online meetings, like uh, teaching uh, together with my student. So this is what happens. Um, so I'm presenting and then uh, everyone's uh, or even uh, when I'm asking a questions, everyone's like silence, everything. So hello. Hello, is there anyone there? Can you hear me? Hello, anyone? So this is really um, ha happens uh, to me as well. This this was uh, also uh, shared by Dr. Lee. Uh, if you join the previous uh, peak into my class March 2021, so Dr. Lee also shared the same uh, problems like, you know, hello, everyone, is there anyone? Uh, can you hear me? So uh, this is also like just now uh, Dr. Yazid uh, shared uh, with us, um, uh, have to turn on the camera and if possible, so that uh, we have more uh, uh, engagements or interactions between us. So it can be very frustrated uh, when you are like, you know, asking questions and then no one respond. And then it took uh, one minute or two minutes, then someone type in the chat box, no, or something. So I think this is very common. I do understand like uh, some of the students, they do not have a stable internet uh, connections, or maybe they, they are using their mobile data. So if you are, they turn on um, the cameras for so long times, it might uh, you know run up all the data plan and whatever. So um, yes, so, 
we we as a teachers uh, we also feel unsupported because uh, this is also uh, many of us like first time doing um, teaching online and then uh, even some lecturer they do not have a technology as well you know the because they have families you know they also their children also have to um, learn um, through online so one laptop for everyone so like everyone compete with each other to like oh now i have to use the laptop to do my work and whatever teachings so this actually create a lot of uh, stress for us and uh, if believe me if you are teaching online you will know like uh, getting more workload compared to the face to face so on the other hand um, students also facing a lot of, of uh, stress um, when they are learning through online. This is, of course, uh, this is also new to them. Um, so this survey was uh, done uh, for last semester, actually, uh, with the faculty. So they are, you see the comments here, lack of motivations. Uh, the student highlighted that uh, it was very tiring and then they have lost the motivations and passions to study. Um, the only thing that keep them going is because they need that degree. Otherwise, I think they have really lost the, uh, the interest. And then some, uh, they also highlighted that some lecturers just read out uh, without any clear uh, explanations um, online when we do the remote uh, learning. So are uh, our students ready to adopt the remote learning? So if you look at this one, um, actually this was done uh, with uh, US institutions. So you see US also the same. You see uh, a lot of students, they prefer completely face to face. So this is a big percentage uh, from their respondents. And then um, if you look at the completely online, this is really uh, a still very, very low uh, percentage. So majority are still prefer either completely face to face or blended. So if you look at uh, the blended, uh, these portions, uh, most they you can see still have a substantial uh, percentage that they prefer the mostly face to face, or they can actually accept uh, hybrid like uh, integrations between these two. So from face to face, which is uh, using a uh, minimum technology until the fully online, uh, which is uh, fully um, utilize all the technologies to deliver the lectures. I think um, many of us are still prefer a uh, blended uh, if possible. So they still prefer to have some kind of interactions between their classmates, between the uh, lecturers and all those. So, um, so today uh, I'm going to share with you a little bit more about uh, this flipped learning. If you see, this is one of the blended uh, learning. So um, why I highlighted this is because, um, uh, okay, this was, I got a research grant from EDEC as well uh, under this uh, UM Lighter um, program uh, in 2017. So this was some time ago. So um, uh, I'm testing to, uh, you know, uh, try a flipped classroom. So just to give you a little bit ideas on uh, what is flipped classroom. So um, we know traditionally um, we as a lecturers, we just stand on the stage and then uh, we give the lectures, talk about our topics and whatever share with the students. So students will sit there and then just listen or absorb completely what you say. So and then after the class, they will go back and then do their home uh, revisions or sometimes they have an assignment to do. But in the free classroom, this actually is totally different. So students have to learn at their homes. So we, we do provide all those pre-recorded videos and everything for them to learn first. And then when they come to the class, they only do the classroom activity, which like for example, they need to solve a problem, uh, the base questions. Uh, maybe uh, they're doing the case study where everyone uh, form in the small group and then they have uh, this kind of uh, interaction and discussions. So they come up with the idea or come up with the solutions. So this is the idea for a flip uh, classroom. So you may ask like why we want to go for a flip classroom. So bear in mind that we have a diverse background of a student. So every student, they learn at a different paces. 
So some students in the class, they might get it what you say, and some may might nearly there, they get what, like nearly get it, or some don't, just don't get it. So whatever you say, they just don't get it. And then if some of the students, they, they, let's say they MC or they cannot attend the class, so they might miss that uh, critical lessons as well. So, um, um, so we have to recognize, like we have to uh, really not understand that some of the problems. Um, so that's why um, if the student can control the whole learning process where you already uploaded all the necessary uh, lectures notes and also the videos or whatever material that they need to know, they can study at home. Maybe today they are a little bit busy on other things so they can study at their own uh, tomorrow. So they have kind of one week to learn and then when they come to the class, we focus on doing the problem-based uh, learnings like or activities where they have uh, a lot of uh, discussions uh, among them and then they can, uh, um, it, this is kind of a collaborative learnings and also the, um, they can encourage more uh, engagements between the students and also the instructor as well. So how does a uh, flip classroom look like? Chaos or very tiring? So uh, of course this maybe happens uh, in the like kindergartens or primary school if you are like uh, talking about free classroom. So um, if the lecturers or sorry, if the teachers didn't uh, control well, so you can see some this thing might happen as well, right? But I believe we are in the tertiary university, uh, tertiary institutions. So um, probably you will see this kind of uh, scenario where students are really like uh, discuss on um, uh, and throw their ideas amongst um, their group mate, everything, so to solve the problems. So I think this will be like quite uh, rewarding for them as well and also for the instructor. So maybe uh, in, in this class, we as the lecturers or instructor, we are doing the facilitations. So uh, we are like facilitate the discussion. We are not giving them the, uh, the solutions or the answer, but we are facilitate their, their discussions. I also tried uh, on my class um, uh, in 2017 or then, uh, 2018. So uh, where the student also divided like into the group. So they uh, they done the discussions and then they try to solve and then they come up with their solution. So this is like, you know, the, they draw everything on their mahjong papers and then uh, they share with the class and then some of the students are from other groups, they can ask and questions them and all those. So of course, uh, if you want to practice this free uh, classroom, it might you might face uh, some of the limitations where we have to really recognize that we have a diverse uh, students background. So everyone's um, they learn from uh, I mean they're from a different background. So when um, when come to the learning, so they might have a different passes. So when you started to impose. Uh, implement this uh, flip classroom so definitely you will face uh, an initial resistance from the students so I also uh, took a, a long time for me to like convince them uh, uh, we have to practice this and um, um, what are the you know the rationals behind why we want to do this because um, like you know when I mentioned then the next week uh, the student come they were still sitting there and uh, waiting for you to give a lectures so they are expecting you to deliver the lectures and teach them uh, what, what they need to know uh, rather than they read uh, before they come. So it really took a while um, for, for, for them to practice. And then another thing would be like, there's no uh, the, the very good assessment um, or the good indicator whether the free classroom is it applied, uh, can be applied for all or only certain things or only certain subjects. So some subject may not be really um, uh, can be applied uh, using these uh, models. So and then sometimes if you are facing um, a more student in your class, like for example, 100 or maybe 50 students, so that will be also quite a challenging as well. So OK, so this is uh, face to face uh, uh, teaching and learnings, um, which I done uh, last some time ago. So here I would like to share like how we can actually uh, incorporate this uh, free uh, classroom online.
So we know that uh, there are many, many uh, software or those uh, platform that allow us to like do teaching and learning. And then some, they uh, allow you to play the game while you are learning. So there are, there are many. So I'm, I'm putting here just a few only, which is uh, quite common. And uh, I, I believe uh, most of you already know at least uh, two or three of uh, from this uh, platform as well. So I think um, before we really go online, uh, first thing we really need to do is planning. So um, as uh, Dr. Uh, Yazid uh, also mentioned, the so planning is very important. So um, before you really can uh, put your, your class into online, so I think you really need uh, um, invest some time to plan your class. You see, uh, from here you can see the students' comment. So they they are commenting like, please upload your lectures notes earlier so that they can print out or jot down important points during the lectures. They also say like, you know, I'm begging, please provide lectures notes, and, and this will be very helpful for uh, students to learn uh, in advance. So um, we have to really recognize that the virtual students, you know, we they study. Uh, online uh, different completely different compared to have a chance uh, by face-to-face -face learning so of course um, i also recognize that we are very busy right you know the lecturers in the university they have a lot of uh, things to do they have a kpi they have a lot of commitments um, so they um, that's why sometimes you have too many things but with little time uh, so but still, uh, planning for your class uh, is really important. Um, uh, it's essential for the online classroom environment. So here I'm just putting up uh, one of the example from my spectrum, actually. So like I would usually like, OK, so this is the first week. So we need to learn about like plant biotechnology because I'm teaching a plant uh, biotechnology mm -hmm. class. So I also put in up the slide actually in PDF versions. Um, and then I also have a pre-recorded uh, version so that if they don't want to listen to my voice, probably they have hit listen so many times. So um, so they can read the PDF versions. It is the same. It's just uh, without the audio. And then I also uploaded uh, all those uh, necessary information or material for them. So uh, some of the articles as well. And then I also uh, included uh, some of the uh, you know the videos from the YouTube. Um, to teach you how on these certain topics for them. And then I will particularly uh, indicate this is for week one so that they know, OK, now this is week one. They need to learn about um, this topic. And then when they move to the week two, then they have to learn about that uh, topic. So this um, will help. I think um, at least will help some so that to guide them, they know, okay, week one, they need to study this, and then week two, they need to study what kind of uh, topic as well. So um, if you want, you also can put the dates. Last time, I also put it the date here, specific, like which date you need to study, but uh, some sometimes I also miss, uh, you know, when there's a public holiday and all those, then I also miss place, you know, the, the date as well. <laughs> so now I'm uh, practicing putting like, okay, week one. So you take, uh, your time to learn for this topic within this week one. So um, every topic after, let's say, first topic, so I will also include this as like some kind of a quiz uh, for them to, uh, to, you know, um, to see whether they are understanding on that particular topic. So this is not exam. So I'm just putting, uh, setting up a quiz, uh, maybe two, three to five uh, quizzes, uh, and then put it there after one topic. So that, uh, okay, so after they learn the topic, then they can try it out for themselves. Like, okay, so uh, pick, uh, choose which uh, correct answer so that they can uh, understand more about these topics. And then um, before they move on to the next topics, so this is like uh, some kind of uh, self evaluations or self checking uh, questions. So I also uh, in, uh, uh, dance for this uh, crossword. So actually they also like, okay, um, from there, how they play these games and whatever. But this is of course uh, related to the subject as well. So this one all are integrated or actually you can do it uh, from spectrum. I mean, for the quiz, you can use the spectrum to do it. 
And then for crossword, you can go to this uh, the website actually, and then you can uh, embed it into or integrate it into the spectrum. So they can just log in into the spectrum and then they just play uh, the game. So uh, this one you can actually type it and then you can delete if you are answered wrongly. So uh, if more uh, interactive. And then I also provide the PDF versions um, if they want to print it, print it out and then uh, they want to do it uh, in hard copy, they also allow to do so. So, um, so I've tried to use only one, uh, of course, uh, platform, uh, Spectrum, everything they can find from their Spectrum once they log in. Of course, uh, certain things uh, they can link into the external uh, platform, but they, they can find uh, from this Spectrum and then they can also find the link to link into uh, external platform rather than like, oh, you, you give this, uh, this link here this time and then um, next le uh, lesson you give another link, say, well, oh, we are using this platform. So people will, uh, I mean, the student will confuse. So uh, everything I will put in the spectrum, uh, whatever external link or whatever in the, the, uh, the activities that can set up in the spectrum, everything's uh, in one uh, shot, okay? So another important thing uh, after you plan your class uh, properly and then uh, design everything perfectly and then um, when come to the actual class, I think uh, stimulate the discussions is uh, also very important. This is like, uh, you know, the interactive and also the uh, engagement. So you see some, you know, the student comments, uh, some lecturer just read off uh, the, the slide without a clear explanation. So they just, some just tell us to read on your own. So I think, um, so student, then why they need to come to the on, uh, online class, right? Because uh, whatever um, you, you you are going to read the, the slide, they can actually download and then read by themselves. So, um, so I think uh, when we do the online classroom, uh, another thing is uh, we have to recognize it is different compared to the traditional classroom. So we need to stimulate the discussions among the, the, the student. So because, uh, you know, uh, when you do the online, it's like a co-mechanical uh, uh, things. So we, there are two way, one, uh, two strategies. One is uh, instructor present. The other one is the students, students, um, the, the, what, the in interactions. So uh, let's look at the instructor present where you are there. Okay, of course, it's not face to face, it's online. So, but the discussions among uh, the students, um, uh, in your presence. So you are there and then probably you can throw out a, a tutorial or maybe the case study and then uh, uh, ask them to either you can divide into the small group to discuss it or you can uh, discuss in the class like throw some idea and then facilitate uh, their, their, you know, the discussions. So you can either do it online or you can just do it like, uh, you know, create a forum platform in the, uh, the what, the spectrum. So uh, there are, of, of course, there are many uh, platforms that you can allow you to have a uh, Google discussions, you know, Google, dis um, you know, the, you can use the share documents, everything they can discuss over there, or you can, uh, you know, do it online to see them and to stimulate the discussions. Right. So uh, another thing is like, for example, you also, um, when you do the discussions or you give a lectures online, you also can like, you know, using this, uh, Kahoot or also the Metimeters um, um, in your class. So Kahoot is more like a game, you know, um, you can set up a quiz, uh, a few qu uh, uh, questions, and then the students, uh, when they key in the code, and then they can just uh, play and like answer and then see who are the fastest, who get the correct answers. And, but nowadays Kahoot is, uh, I think is quite popular. And then uh, a lot of students know what is the uh, Kahoot. So, uh, the first time I, I um, uh, tested the Kahoot and then everyone are excited. And then now, uh, I think after a few years, when I uh, like Kahoot, oh, then everyone like, oh, <laughs> oh, okay, again. So yes, I think it, it already uh, quite famous. I mean, uh, quite popular. Um, they are not so excited anymore. So another thing that you can consider also uh, as a, uh, you know, uh, same with Kahoot, which is the Metimeters, but Metimeters is like, it's not like games, it's just like asking a question during a class. Also, students have to uh, log in, key in the code, and then they can just quickly answer 
like okay, uh, what is, what makes the genetics uh, engineer possible? So which one then? Okay, it's like uh, the uh, discussion rather than you just keep talking, 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 and then uh, there's no like some kind of at least interactions. So or self checking their understanding uh, in between. So I think you can uh, like consider like uh, putting some of the this kind of uh, platform into your presentations or into your lectures or uh, yeah your class as well. So now we talk about the instructor presence. So now we are talking about the student student interaction. So not necessarily must be we always there and then present 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 and then give them the lectures. So uh, the students, students also can interact with each other to learn from each other. So this will also uh, engage more in their courses as well. So the students have the opportunity to interact, uh, interact academically with their classmates and also socially. Sometimes they will talk other things rather than uh, talk about the course. So this like, you know, um, I also try to give them the infographic assignments. Then uh, they are working as a group and then they, they discuss uh, at uh, their free time because this is a group assignment so they can uh, whatever set up their own uh, small group uh, meetings online and then they can do the discussion and then they can come up with some uh, infographic and then some design so you don't underestimate their creativity so they can do a lot of things actually um, you know they are technology savvy compared to us so yes right um, so I'm a teaching biology course, so uh, we do have a practical class. Um, you know, uh, last year when COVID come and then uh, MCO, so we can't really enter the campus and we can't enter the lab to do the hands-on practical class. So I was thinking, okay, maybe we have to do online then uh, what they can learn. So I'm trying to put the practicals, manual, everything, uh, how to conduct, put it in a diagram like this, showing them like, okay, then we do the online uh, teaching and then show, uh, tell them like, okay, this is from the practical three, just now you all learn. And then uh, now we move to uh, practical four. So what you need to do because you are, have uh, this bacteria, you are this plant and then how you mix it and then how to do the culturing, everything. Because we can't enter the lab. So I was thinking of putting this and then I also upload some of the video from YouTube as well related to this uh, topic. But the thing is, you know, the video is from uh, other university or whatever, but they might not have the same practical class uh, with you. OK, so sometimes the technique might be slightly different. So I have to mention to them clearly like, OK, so this they are using this technique. We are using this technique and those both techniques are working. But for this practical class, we are using these techniques. But uh, after that, uh, when the MCO and CMCO are uh, lifted when we go to uh, RMCO at that time. So uh, we have an opportunity to enter the lab uh, for staff. Okay, for staff. So uh, and also for my uh, postgrad students. So I'm um, quickly ask my postgrad students, perhaps we can uh, film it, okay, record uh, some of the experiments for, for our undergraduate students. So with my uh, postgrad students' help, um, so um, they are trying to film. Uh, how these practicals works. So um, um, one of my students, Carlson, so he is doing like the how demonstrating how to cut the leaf, everything. And then we have uh, another postgrad student, Zawani, who helping like taking the video recordings, all those. So at least a uh, student can uh, uh, see, they can't uh, enter the lab to do their practical class uh, by their own, but at least they can see. So this is just a short video. Actually, it's a three minutes video. Uh, I try not to uh, record for too uh, long because when you have a long durations, then the file will getting uh, quite large. And then uh, it's difficult for students to download because uh, you know they they might have uh, using their mobile data everything. So that's why I try to restrict like to three three minutes uh, or to maximum five minutes so that they can download it. Right, the last thing, don't forget to motivate your student because uh, as uh, just now I mentioned, right, um, when we go uh, online teaching, so students are stressed, we are also stressed, we have a lot of things to do and then uh, uh, the workload is increasing um, and everyone can become crazy. So, and then we have to really uh, uh, recognize that everyone learns differently. So. 
uh, we really need to uh, motivate them. Um, but of course, motivation is quite uh, challenging as well because different people, they might not buy your idea or whatever. So I think uh, as a lecturer, you need to like uh, understand your student and then um, try to um, see what are the possible way to motivate them or probably you can give some extra point for them uh, if they are participating in the online discussions or or maybe they have uh, some optional uh, assignment as well we of course also need uh, motivation as well um, unfortunately i can't uh, really uh, provide any solution for you of how to motivate you uh, in teaching and learning but certainly uh, the edX could provide the support and also the guidance to you. So, um, in fact, they have done a very good job. Uh, like they have a lot of uh, this kind of program or also the workshop or seminars uh, in the past years. I mean, um, they even also have a RU grants that uh, everyone's, every lecturers can apply um, so that to improve their teachings and learning. So just now I mentioned the technology embedded, this was in uh, 2007. Uh, 2019 so that I attended so I think uh, that is uh, very uh, useful for me at least so I think uh, if you have uh, really uh, facing a lot of uh, issue or uh, you need guidance probably the edX is the best uh, center that you can uh, ask for with that uh, thank you very much uh, thank you for your attention Um, is there any question from the participants to Dr. Tan? If you have any question, you can just unmute your mic and um, deliver the question. question. I have one question. Yes. Uh, I know the size of your class huh? and then how, how, how long the class. And normally one class, you take a uh, three hours straight or you break it is it uh, three credit hours okay so uh, I'm, I'm last semester I'm actually teaching uh, two courses so one is uh, master course uh, the you know the coursework master coursework um, that was uh, three hour uh, straight so I usually will break uh, uh, the class um, and then um, you know, online I probably do uh, one to uh, one hour, and then after that uh, we'll break, and then most of the time, like the other two hours, will be the activities uh, for them. So, and the other one, uh, the undergraduate program, that one will be uh, just one hour uh, per class, uh, and then we have uh, two classes per week. Um, and then when we do online, usually I just pre-recorded all the lectures uh, beforehand, and then. Um, for that particular semester, I usually will have at least four um, online meetings um, or discussions with the students. Okay, thank you. Uh, can you share uh, the challenge that you face for the three hours class and how you uh, ensure the student uh, actively engage and any any uh, problem you face for that three hours class? Is it uh, early morning or is it in the afternoon? Can you share oh, the, the problem and how you uh, attend to those Problem. Yeah, that is very good uh, questions. <laughs> um, um, my class is actually afternoon, so um, yes, it's really challenging because um, uh, first, of course, after lunch is uh, not easy for them to uh, keep focus on your lectures, and then um, they are always uh, expecting you to talk, and then they will just keep silence. So um, that's why um, I'm I'm practicing the free classroom learnings um, where. I want them, okay, it's, it's very hard to 100% free classroom. So um, so that's why I will start with uh, may, maybe just a short 15 to 30 minutes uh, lectures, talk about what we are going to study, and then uh, some of the uh, summary of uh, the topic for today's, and then of course some of the important points they need to know. And then after that, we'll break them into a group, and then uh, they have to do uh, the group discussions. So. Group discussions, although we, we try to restrict to like maybe 20 minutes because it's too long, it will like um, very hard and then students may not uh, like uh, actively engage in their discussion as well. So, but um, you know, the first time I, I did like, it's very hard. I said 20 minutes, but uh, they took, I think one hour 
not yet finish, not yet finish, and then um, they took one hour and then one and a half, I think at the end, one and a half hour to discuss one topic. And then of course, uh, at the end, uh, they have to present. So they have to present and um, share uh, with their group uh, members uh, what are their findings and all those, how to solve this problem. And then other group also, you have to stimulate them to, you know, to participate for Q&A. Otherwise, this group present and then other group like, oh, just keep quiet and then, okay, no questions at all. So I actually asked them, okay, if you can ask one question from your group, then you will get one point. So then, okay, then they see, okay, they got the point, then, uh, okay, they start to ask questions. Good strategy, like, good strategy. <laughs> yeah, you, you have to somehow force them, actually, you have to somehow force them. Otherwise, they will just keep quiet and then say, no, no questions, everything perfect. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks, thanks for sharing. Umu? Um, yeah, thank Han. you. Kita boleh proceed dengan, oh, ada soalan lagi tak? Uh, Bhavani, you have any question? Ha, hi, yeah. Hi, Dr. Tan, I'm Bhavani here. So, hi. I just want to ask, let's say if you have like groups, like, I I'm not sure how's your assessments like, let's say if you have, you have uh, multiple group presentations. So, do you actually get the students to stay in the same group for throughout the course or do you actually... Uh, shuffle them around so did they give any feedback on that what's their preference you mean the the group same group throughout the whole semester yeah or because sometimes they say it's easier because when it comes to online rather than shuffling because ha considering the issues of getting online you know so we thought like okay getting them into the same group throughout the course might solve many issues but uh, did you experience that or did you like really shuffle the number of students like i mean among them I do like for example we have a uh, 14 weeks right so usually uh, for the first seven um, I will like okay you stick to this group and then probably after uh, the second uh, seven weeks then they will uh, shuffle against so because um, you know uh, I don't want like uh, everyone like just stick to the same group and then throughout the, uh, the whole semester so they they lack of like interactions with other classmates or all those so I will just Seven first seven weeks, uh, this group and then uh, shuffle and then uh, for the next uh, sevens. So I think uh, if you really keep like shuffling like every time, so uh, it's also quite problematic. Yes, for online. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, any last question? If not, we can proceed with Dr. Rosilawati. Dr. Ros, are you ready? Yes, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Yes, I'm ready. All right. Um, okay, all yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mo. Okay, let me share my screen. Mm. Okay. Uh, we can see your screen now. All right, thank you. Okay, um, yeah, thank you for, for giving me this opportunity. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And uh, good morning, still morning, everyone. Okay, um, today I just uh, like like what Dr. Uh, Yazid and also Dr. Tan uh, do is that uh, just a sharing uh, session. So this is uh, what uh, I did for my class. Okay, uh, so so the objective normally I will say the objective for today. So the objective for today's class, today's session is to share teaching and learning experience using uh, diverse technology in teaching and learning. So um, I'm sharing my course on uh, BID 2007, which is uh, Rural and Regional Planning. Quite a dry uh, subject, um, you know. Before, okay, but Alhamdulillah, this this year around, uh, this time around, I managed to blend it. So Alhamdulillah, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to join the Emerald class. I um, I learned a lot. Okay, and then uh, student engagement. My uh, I am more into students engagement. Uh, what I see um, when I link to diverse platforms, like, like what Dr. Tan said, uh, just use one 
uh, one platform so that they don't get confused. Um, but um, it's uh, it's I I I I did that uh, the last two weeks and uh, it's so monotonous. So the students uh, really was very quiet. You know, they got I think they 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 got bored about about the the technique. So uh, I I did some changes. So uh, then I would like you to reflect uh, my teaching. Okay, my, not my teaching, my sharing session. Okay, uh, for my class, the BID 2007, okay. So I used uh, this, uh, all these platforms, okay, uh, to engage them in my teaching and learning. Uh, before this, I just, you know, for about two hours, I'll be teaching us Christians. And then I could see that they are quiet, just like what I see now. I only see faces. Uh, I don't see any video because, yeah, I understand that they might not be able to, um, you know, uh, get data, unlimited data and so on. So I, I don't force them to share any, any video and so on. So uh, what I did was I was uh, in the spectrum. Okay, I will uh, upload all the necessary documents in my spectrum. Can you see my spectrum here? Can uh, anyone? Yes, we can see. Oh, okay. So, uh, so I put the date like what Dr. Tan said, uh, week one. So I put the date so that they go, they, 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 they don't get confused. So here, uh, you know, I upload for week one, attendance, lecture week. So you don't see much here. But in the lecture lecture week one, I put the link uh, to my uh, classes. So um, uh, what I did was uh, I used Miro. First, before before I use Miro, I use uh, Padlet. So Padlet uh, was my first uh, how do you say uh, adventure into this technology. I did not uh, uh, do much, but this is what uh, I have. Okay, so for week one, what I, I discovered with them, with the students, I, I did this with the students. Um, so I put up uh, the performa, you know, they can actually uh, click and see and then uh, alignment of learning. So we discuss about this, the, the documents, the main thing about the course. And then uh, the course info. So under the course info, they can see uh, what's being what will be discussed uh, weekly and the topic. So uh, I didn't do like what Doctor Tan did. Uh, you put up your lecture notes first. Uh, no, this one uh, I said you have to follow um, what's been written in the course info. I will follow strictly on the topic from there, so they know already. And then the student learning time. They, uh, I actually uh, brief them on uh, how much time they, they, you su they're supposed to spend on for this course. And then uh, final exam, uh, what does it constitute and so on. And then uh, the assignments, so I put out the assignments, okay, what they're supposed to do. What I normally do is that because uh, assignment is quite heavy for um, urban and regional student uh, program, uh, why? Because they have studio and they have to uh, come up with a studio report uh, three times. Um, so it's quite uh, it's quite challenging. Uh, so what I did was I tried to blend my assignment with uh, what's being done in 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 a studio. Let's say for example they they uh, they're going to do a study for uh, maybe a structure plan. Because second year, second semester, they will be doing structure plan. So if they are doing structure plan, which part, uh, which uh, state are they, uh, are they doing? So I will try my best to, to uh, you know, to mirror the, the assignment uh, towards uh, what's being, uh, you know, chosen in the structure plan in the studio. So that one will, you know, uh, like, lighten a bit their their burden and then um, I, I told them yeah there'll be online tests uh, so we provide the link uh, the not the online test and the, the week uh, that they're supposed to have the test and then uh, I asked them to uh, divide their group 
So for tutorial, uh, this one is for tutorial and also for assignments. I don't change uh, like what Dr. Tan did. Uh, first week, first seven week, uh, one group. Another seven week, you change group. No, uh, I maintain uh, as it is because the assignment that they did, um, they going to do, uh, they are doing. Uh, we'll uh, start from the beginning of the semester and they will submit maybe probably week 13 or week 12. So it has to remain with the same uh, group members. So I asked them to um, uh, choose their own group. So yeah, uh, that's how I, I, I got the group. And then, uh, and then in uh, Alam Bina, in the environment, we have uh, for tutorial, we divided the class into two parts. Uh, so group one, maybe let's say I have only 30, 30 students or 32, the most is 35. So divided into two uh, sessions or the first session will start at two. My class is in the afternoon, so very challenging like what Dr. Tan is facing. And um, uh, start at two, the other group will start at, uh, at three o'clock. So this is for tutorial, but for the uh, for the lecture, it will be two hours. Okay, then I start, uh, you know, start my my lecture. First, I ask them to um, come up with from from just from the air or they want to Google online. It's up to them. So what are the issues uh, in rural areas? So they put up. I said you have to put. I put a sample here. Uh, write your name because uh, if you don't log in, then uh, or you log in using uh, because this one I have to allow them, right? So if not, you become anonymous. So I said write down your name up there and then you write your, your comments or uh, whatever. So I they, they actually, uh, yeah, put, put in everything like what Dr. Tan said. Okay, I said uh, anyone. Uh, 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 right, uh, you get uh, points. So yeah, I actually when you know when when you want to normalize at the end of the semester, you want to normalize the 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 the, the marks. Uh, not uh, average, no normalize. Is it what do you call that? Yeah, never mind. So um, yeah, I I I will look into all this participation uh, of students uh, in 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 class. So that's why the the yeah, uh, they put up uh, whatever they uh, think is uh, is what's going on in uh, in rural areas. So what I did was I will uh, read together uh, with them, discuss, and I will highlight uh, the one that you know really struck me. I said, okay, look, uh, okay, uh, Akma said uh, issue number one. Then uh, I will just summarize it, and I said, see. Uh, what she highlighted, uh, I, I discussed with the class. So from there, I, I engaged with them. So they were, uh, they know that I will read and give feedback on the spot. So yeah, the the, the first part, because um, I don't know, Padlet, uh, I'm not that good in Padlet. So uh, I, this, this is the only thing that I uh, tried treasure at the moment okay so uh, I prefer to use another application where I can see uh, the creativity of the students and then I asked about uh, uh, possible solutions and then I asked about the definition okay so they yeah they give it back I said I will uh, check your uh, their work uh, uh, online so this is uh, using Padlet, okay? And then um, I also uh, use um, uh, Miro. I love Miro, okay? I love Miro. Um, but uh, I can actually, uh, I but, but the limitation is that you can ha only have three projects. Uh, three projects, so you can, uh, if you want to use it more, you have to uh, delete one. So what I did was I uh, export uh, the data. So this is what they did yesterday. Very, um, 
I don't know. I think they are sleepy. Uh, you know, very dull. I would say dull feedback. We are we were talking about rural restructuring, and this this is what the student did. So they did it before, but uh, in a more uh, creative way. But I don't know. I guess uh, they were sleepy yesterday. Okay, another uh, another uh, application that I use is uh, Dropbox Paper. Okay, Dropbox Paper. Um, I I don't really how to say enjoy it much. Okay, this is what my student did. Uh, just to I put up uh, about the rural uh, integrated rural area. Uh, and then, uh, then I asked them to give a feedback. So according to the group, so lighten up their burden. So you don't have to do individual, you do it uh, according to the group. So they, they actually post uh, in, in, in the uh, Dropbox paper. So this uh, the creative one. Uh, I have one student from China and I have one student from um, uh, Indonesia. So this is the one, and then um, another one that I use is Mentimeter. Okay, I use Menti Mentimeter with the public where I uh, teach them on uh, Mesra Perjalan Kaki, walkability. So I, I played this game. Uh, I, I know that Kahoot is, is, is more uh, happening. Uh, but I like to see, uh, you know, uh, this word uh, uh, being said by the participants, so they can they can actually type and they can take some time, you know. So yeah, I I would prefer this uh, than Kahoot um, in my case. Okay, and then uh, this is what uh, I did with uh, another another group. Okay, and then Jamboard. Jamboard is very interesting. I love Jamboard. Why? Okay, um, this is what my student did uh, for their work. Okay, uh, so reflection on week 13, uh, week 3 lessons. So they have this and then rural landscape. So what what is rural landscape? So this is what they did. Um, and then uh, the good thing about Jamboard is that you can uh, swap the page. You can have many, many pages. And, you know, it, it looks so interesting uh, for us to read. Uh, I like colors. Uh, I don't like monotonous. Uh, so, I don't know, the students probably jive with me uh, in this case. Except for yesterday's lesson where they were so, they were so dull. I don't know. I think, um, Few of them were sick, and then um, the active one uh, was not present yesterday. So yeah, probably because of that, probably one of the. So this is according to their group. So I asked them to prepare. Okay, what do you understand about rural landscape? So uh, we did the discussion in in lecture, and then for tutorial, what we do is that they have to explain. Uh, what they understand about rural landscape. So, yeah, um, I engage with them uh, through uh, Jamboard a lot. So, uh, another, uh, you can see here, uh, this one. So, they talk about, um, okay, they talk about Yayasan Hasana uh, doing, so I, I said, uh, I said this is, uh, it, how uh, how I interpret uh, so they they know uh, yes yeah, Asana is not the community we, we were talking about community uh, building yeah, I said yes Kazana yes and Kazana is is not community building it has to come from the community but but yes and Hasana do uh, do something for community for the community so um, a good example that uh, was uh, done by one of the groups uh, was this one. Okay, so it's about sustenance. 
uh, zero waste and beyond. So, uh, how they use uh, waste and they produce something else. So, it's from the community. Uh, so, I told them this is a good example. So, they learn from their peers. So, that's what uh, we were, you know, uh, uh, focusing on. Okay, so you will, must be wondering why I have this uh, logo. So, this is my Center for Civilizational Dialogue. Okay, because I'm the director there. So, if you notice, uh, if you receive any emails uh, asking you to join talks and so on, so we have dialogues. And then, um, uh, another one is the UM do care. So, people are asking, why do uh, UM do care, care about what? Actually, it's, uh, it's a logo for uh, one of the research uh, uh, in community building in circular economy because I'm going for circular economy. That's my passion. So, uh, Chang, actually, Chang Li Wei uh, uh, worked with me on the logo and so we have a, a website for this. Okay, so these are the, these are the six applications that um, that are really used heavily for my teaching so that I can engage with the with the student. Okay, uh, this is the example uh, of Myro. Uh, not like what happened yesterday. This was, uh, I think, week, uh, week three. It's about integrated rural planning. So they actually can be very creative uh, in putting up uh, all these and and I we did it online straight away. They they are able to see uh, all the pointer coming in, going out, you know, delete and so on. And then uh, I asked I asked about the keywords for what. So when I said uh, integrated rural planning, uh, they have to answer what, uh, uh, why, where, you know, so and how. So this is what. Uh, the output of the that that uh, discussion, and it, it is based on Myro, and I love Myro very much. Yeah, that's I don't know about the others, but yeah, and Jamboard, Jamboard uh, because it's Google um, Google applications. We have uh, the full suite of uh, Google application. There's uh, a lot that can be you know can be utilized for our teaching and learning. All right, so I would like uh, you uh, to take this, uh, you know, uh, survey and reflection on my teaching, if it is possible. And I will show you the score later on. So I think that's all uh, from me, uh, Umu. Diam je. Any question? Umu. Any question? Umur, umur tak ada eh? <laughs> okay, Semua saya tanya soalan lah. <laughs> ah, itulah berlaku kan, semua orang tidur. Ah, saya, saya tengah on, on, on another meeting juga ni. Oh, ah, tengok umur tak respon tu. Um, soalan. Uh, student, ada ada experience macam soalan yang saya tanya Dr. Tan tadi tak? Uh, class yang very long hour class and then um, student macam dah lemau, how, how uh, Dr. Rosie uh, attend to that kind of uh, problem? Can share? Kalau boleh share? Sebab oh. mungkin mungkin uh, sebelum-sebelum ni pun mungkin boleh share jugalah. I believe you have experience 3 hour class straight. Uh, how to ensure the student keep engaging? Okay, uh, yang uh, three hours tu masa jam master lah. Tapi, tapi masa tu teknologi tak guna lagi dah macam-macam ni. But uh, I normally uh, use one and a half hours 
to uh, one hour to just give uh, brief on the topic that you know to be taught that week and then uh, the rest of the hour uh, in order to make sure that they they they, they don't go silent like uh myro link when okay, i created the myro link uh, so i can see engagement of the students so hmm. they are putting up uh, you can see immediately uh, because every single uh, participant will have their own mouse uh, cursor on okay. the screen right hmm. yeah so you you can see it's moving it's uh yeah, uh, then I, I taught them first, I, I taught them how to use it. And then I think yesterday they forgot, totally forgot about it because I, I use Jamboard most of the time after because I have to uh, export uh, Miro class uh, so that uh, I can use uh, for another project for another class. Uh, so because it has limitation, right? Miro. Yeah, Miro, Miro, you can only have three projects at the time mm. Mm. if not you have to pay so i i love myro because my myro can show the networking the how is it being linked with one topic to another so yeah at the i i guess uh, because uh, now it's already week six so next week it will be week seven so at, at the first seven weeks i touch on rural uh, rural planning so at the end of the uh, you know uh, topic, uh, I will ask them to integrate between the topics that you know that uh, for the last seven seven weeks. So what do they what do they learn? What are the G's? So if I ask them um, at the beginning of the class, you see uh, they are very responsive, even though it's in the afternoon. Mm. So that that's why, and then I I meet them write their names on on the on the sticky note so that you know I know who is I we can see that uh ah. the pointer how, with their how big how big how big is the class uh it's small 30, 30, okay, 30 uh. odd numbers uh. I think Very for 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 big class can Myro still able to um I I never tried. Uh, with the big class uh, uh what is the limitation uh, in terms of number of user number of participants it, it, uh, i am not so sure but i don't see any limitation of number of uh, students it's just a number of projects number of project only mm. Yep. Mm. and then uh you know you can see a, a bigger screen uh, like for example um, let me show um, like this one, right? So you can actually zoom in and zoom out and see uh, what's the uh, the response. So what was the number of students that you have, Dr. Yazid? Normally? Dr. Rose, can I just ask you also, since you are on this, mm -hmm. um, whenever the students key in something, would you, uh, and uh, once they are done with keying in uh, all this, um, you know all these uh, words and all these things. Will you be able to know who ha who has actually written it? Uh, at the at that particular moment when they were writing, yes. But after that, uh, no, because yeah, it's like this. Uh, I won't know who wrote what. Uh, so okay. what I ask them to do is that you, you have to write your name. Like for example, uh, this one, uh, they have to write their name. So Jasmine. She wrote this. Oh, okay, right. You ask them and to then, write their name uh, at the end of it. So that, uh, so that we, uh, I know because uh, at, at when they were writing, we can see the pointer belongs to them. But after they have written it and and then they exit uh, Myro, we can't see. So I told them to to write like for example, Lo, uh, he wrote this. So okay. the rest uh, and this one. Uh, this one I know, uh, Mashita, because we were discussing uh, about this uh, topic. So I know who, who wrote this because I asked uh, immediately. So they can actually, uh, yeah, lots, lots of uh, um, additional information that they can write uh, on, on this screen. 
it is this much so much better than um than Jamboard just now? Jamboard, uh, okay. Um, let me show you the difference. Okay, Jamboard. Okay. Jam Jamboard can only uh, show you this, and then I'm not so sure whether it can provide linkages. But Miro is different in the sense that you can write. You can actually, uh, let's say for example, I take this shape, right? So I put it here. And um, I want to link it to, uh, I want to write something that will be, will be there. And then I want to add on to this. Okay, wait. Duh. Not bad, duh. Okay. So I put a link or uh, color. Okay. Uh, and then I can choose color, what color I want. And then, you know, you write something here. So I can uh, test it. This one, my student can also see uh, what's going on, what I'm doing. You see? Yeah, yeah. I think this is more, much more interesting. Ah, uh, so yeah, my student, I think uh, they they prefer this one. It's just that they forgot about um, forgot about the a sticky note that they can use. They, they actually, uh, if you can see here. You can see here they insert a, a diagram, uh, and you can actually they can actually uh, provide uh, a link, more copy link. So and at the end of the day, you can export it, you export uh, this board. Hmm. So the links object they will teach you how to link uh, object and so on. Very interesting. I, I love my room very much. I'm willing to pay if I need to. <laughs> but so far, I'm using the free version first. And then, uh, as you can see, what my student did for, for my lesson, they added uh, this one. See, they, they can actually do this, you know amazing and colorful and uh, they were asking me doctor what happened to the one that we did uh, you know so I, I need to put this back in spectrum another one is mentimeter mentimeter so i have not seen anyone uh, do anything yet so probably uh, if you want to test uh, Please do uh, the, the survey now. Can can we do and then I can show you uh, what's uh, the score like. Just type three words, you, limitation uh, three words. Can you do it now, everyone? Hang on, yeah, I, I'm trying. Ah, okay. I put down the... Oops. I've not seen yet. If uh, if I don't see uh, anything happening, meaning that no, no one is uh, taking part uh, in this session. Uh, so, uh, no, um, what happened is uh, that, that, it, yeah. that oh hang on that that is some, someone else I, uh, some something is that there's an, uh, it says here there's an issue connecting to the mentimeter server I have an issue oh, okay <laughs> so uh, sorry. Right, I, I tried me, twice already okay let me uh, copy the link because I probably you have to um, Key, uh, you have to go to mentimeter.com and then uh, write the code. Mm -mm. What's the code? This is the code. Wait. Hang on. Let me go to Mentimeter. In the chat room. That's the code. Local company. Boleh share apa ni voting link tu sekali? If you share the, the link in the chat, ah, that would be good. Yeah. Okay. Voting link. 
I'll give the thank you. Welcome. The QR code. The QR code. It's here. Dr. Bhavani, ah, yeah, that's the code. So, uh, if you, we, if we have similar words uh, being uh, being said uh, more than once, it will grow bigger. So you can uh, actually choose lot lots of uh, uh, type. Okay, let's say uh, if you want to use this type, like what Doctor Tan did was uh, uh, was a uh, uh, was a uh, this one multiple choice. You can, you know, uh, you have, you can have quiz, you can have slide content. Uh, mine, I, I, I like the word cloud. The word cloud. Open in the uh, ranking. Quite interesting. So, okay, I think, um, uh, uh, that's that's all from me. Uh, if you don't have any question, we reach at rosilawatiza at um dot you dot mind. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rose. Um, do we have any question from the floor? You can just unmute your mic to ask the question. Okay, no question. Okay, uh, perhaps we can end this session. Thank you to Dr. Yazid, Dr. Tan and Dr. Rose for the beneficial sharing. Uh, please do not forget to fill up the feedback form. The link is available in the chat area. Thank you. Rose, we'll see you again. Free saya nak belajar. Apa -apa belajar. Yang berkaitan dengan tu. Belajar yang mana Dr. Yazid? Banyak, banyak tu tu. <laughs> saya cuba explore. Kalau start nanti saya tanya lah. Boleh, boleh. Boleh, okay, boleh. Okay. Boleh invite Dr. Rose next session. <laughs> boleh. Tapi itulah saya pun uh, sebenarnya um, belajar lagi ni. Menggagau, menggagau belajar. Tapi seronok lah saya tak. 